Good afternoon and thanks. And of course, thanks to the uh, conference organizers for inviting us here today. We much appreciate that. And then also uh, thanks to all of you for taking a little bit of time here. We know you have your choice of presentations to see. So uh, thanks for giving us your time and attention. So let's jump right in a little bit on Commend's bio. I'll give you some highlights. It's uh, been a very busy year for us, especially the past few months. So uh, as of last week, you might have known us as Wibby Works Therapeutics. So we have a new corporate ID at this point, and uh, because we knew we had the conference here this week, we said we better get a start on naming our technology. So, uh, so we decided to name it Start. So there it is, and um, uh, we were able to finish that branding exercise in about 24 hours as a result. Uh, but that stands for Stimulated Toll-Like Receptor Technology. And certainly we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. Uh, so our management team has changed. Our founder and CEO, Dr. Eileen Betancourt, um, developed the technology. She's got experience at uh, National Cancer Institute in Tulane. Our chief medical officer, Dr. Ruth Waterman, also with experience at Tulane and now UCSD. And yours truly uh, came on board formally this year with some experience at Becton Dickinson, Lonza, and General Electric. So. We spent a little bit of time here uh, restructuring, reforming the corporation, so we're now a Delaware C Corp. We have labs and offices right here in beautiful sunny San Diego, and we've got uh, offices in Maryland as well. So in addition to all of this, uh, we've been focused a lot on our portfolio expansion, our IP estates, so we have a number of patents pending, and our focus is on two particular platforms. One is MSC1, mesenchymal stem cells one, and that's a cancer immunotherapy platform. And the other is MSC2, an inflammatory disease immunotherapy. So we're keen to get into the clinic, so we're preclinical stage here at this point, and um, so we've uh, spent a little bit of time on the manufacturing process optimization. These are allogeneic, off-the-shelf cells, and much as uh, uh, previous couple of speakers alluded to, that's important to make sure that we've got our cost controls right, uh, because we think there's a lot of benefits here to this. And um, so at this juncture, we're pretty much ready to go. As a matter of fact, we're uh, going to send in the CDs to the FDA here later this week um, for our first pre-IND submission, and that's going to be for CMB200, which is the MSC2 platform for acute optic neuritis. So a little bit of history on the company. Uh, it really first started back in 2007 when Dr. Betancourt showed that uh, toll-like receptors existed uh, on MSCs and that they control their immunomodulatory properties. So why is this important or significant? Well, um, certainly at that time, it, it, it suggested that uh, the toll-like receptors and MSCs themselves had maybe a more important role in immunity and immunomodulation than was previously thought. And that's because toll-like receptors are evolutionarily ancient. They're there to sense uh, injury, harm, disease, and particularly from microbial invaders. So the MSCs, therefore, the hypothesis was, well, maybe they're sensing what's transpiring and have some role in immunomodulation. So that was put to the test, and in 2010, uh, there was a paper uh, that Dr. Betancourt published here again, which showed that you can actually polarize the cells into a specific anti-tumor pro-inflammatory phenotype or a, a purely anti-inflammatory phenotype. So that's the MSC1 and MSC2 again. So uh, we got a lot of traction on the technology. Uh, by the end of last year, uh, we had shown uh, efficacy in seven different preclinical models of disease. And uh, Nature Immunology published a review, and they took a look back at um, the timeline of MSCs and immunomodulation, and, um, and the discovery of the START technology was highlighted as a major event. So here we are, and with all due humility, we do think that this is perhaps uh, the start of something big in immunotherapy, most notably because we're standing on the shoulders of a lot of good work that's been done with MSCs on the anti-inflammatory side. So we're accentuating the properties there, but most notably in the case of the MSC1s for immuno-oncology, what's exciting about this is in the past MSCs uh, in the tumor microenvironment, uh, one was fortunate if they did no harm while they're here in this case, there's a very definite um, anti-cancer set of properties here. So what is it? How does it work? Uh, quite simply, it's uh, uh, you're starting, if you think about nature and how this goes in a healthy patient, um, there's an injury of some sort, there's warning signals that go out, and those signals can be some combination of cytokines or 
toll-like receptor ligands, certainly in some instances. And that's all we're doing here. We're just taking uh, a ligand for toll-like receptor 4 uh, to stimulate the creation of an MSC1 phenotype or uh, a ligand for uh, toll-like receptor 3 to create the MSC2. So there's a binding event with the uh, TLR, the toll-like receptor, that drives a phenotypic change. You get an MSC phenotype that has greater migration capabilities. It goes to the site and it has an interaction, not only the secretome, but also there's some direct cell-to-cell -cell contact. And they basically wind up rebooting the immune system, almost quarterbacking the, uh, the behaviors of the rest of the uh, immune system in the cells. So you wind up getting a very favorable effect. And we'll show you a little bit of data on that here in a minute. So we get the benefits of working off of MSC, so a very favorable safety profile, right? Uh, uniformity, we'll show you a little bit about how that works because essentially all MSCs, we believe, have these toll-like receptors and we've demonstrated that. So you're gonna get a good priming efficiency. You can convert them all over to these phenotypes. And they have great homing properties in the mechanism of action is solid in um, all the derivations of MSCs, whether from bone marrow, adipose-derived, or IPSC, uh, should really work. And we've shown that certainly with adipose-derived and the bone marrow-derived. So let's take a little bit of a look at uh, some of the data. So the migration capabilities, the MSCs, which in of themselves, as many of you already know, um, have great migration capabilities on their own. You can see on a relative scale with our optimized manufacturing process that MSC1s and MSC2s have greater than a two-fold um, improvement in migration capabilities. And in terms of their biodistribution, what's excellent here is they, they bypass the lung. So they're getting to the site of immune dysfunction and being able to work their action without getting held up. So another phenotypic advantage, and here this is the case of MSC1s, you can see uh, inhibition of a number of pro-tumor um, mechanisms as well as um, uh, stimulation of some of the anti-tumor mechanisms, notably mast cell degranulation, as well as TRAIL, the pro-apoptotic molecule. Um, in the case of MSC1s, there's about a hundred-fold increase in the uh, level of TRAIL excretion there. So, um, does it work? Well, again, all preclinical data, but very uh, compelling. You've got the cells migrating to the tumor site, as you can see. A uh, single dose of MSC1s halts tumor growth and um, moves on to shrink the tumors. And we've seen this effect in mice with as little as half a million cells. So this concept of low dose, uh, we get to that in part because if you think about MSCs, which have had you know, notable success in the clinic on the um, anti-inflammatory side, um, so that'll apply here as well when we look at the uh, immuno-oncology end of things. So if you're starting with an initial population, there's a certain amount of heterogeneity to those cells, and then they have to run the gauntlet um, through 11 organ systems, not get held up in the lung. So you have a certain number of cells at the site of immune dysfunction, as you can see on the top. And you compare that to uh, the conversion to a homogeneous population through the START technology, so you've got a consistent um, immunomodulating cell phenotype that gets to where it needs to be. So we think that there's a multifold impact as a result. We should be able to get a lower dose in humans. So same, again, holding true here for MSC2s. Um, notably on the anti-inflammatory side, IL-10, uh, Tregs, and then on the pro-inflammatory side, inhibition of TNF-alpha and, um, and uh, cytotoxic, cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Similarly, and this is just one example, but a, a particularly good one and, and relevant to where we want to go with our clinical trial is the um, clinical scores in an EAE model, which is one of those from mice that actually translates fairly well into humans. Uh, it's a good model for multiple sclerosis. And as you can see on the upper left, compared to controls in naive MSCs, um, uh, terrific scores, clinical scores, obviously lower is better here in this case. And we saw up to 30% uh, uh, complete response. So pretty powerful, uh, restored myelin levels, alleviated pain, improved motor function, and all of this together, again, we think is going to, you know, lead to a point where we can have uh, very low dosing and or infrequent dosing in humans. So our initial focus is multiple sclerosis. Of course, it's a large market, and uh, the therapeutic landscape as it is today, there's, there's therapies there. They're, uh, they're fine, um, and what's up and coming is 
uh, exciting. That said, we still think that there are going to be many, many unmet clinical needs for some time. So we want to focus in this area, but we don't necessarily want to take on the challenge of multiple sclerosis and a very long, complicated clinical trial, certainly not for our phase one, two. So uh, what we've chosen to do is take CMB200 in and focus on acute optic neuritis. And the demyelinating form of AON um, is often the first sign of multiple sclerosis. And so as a matter of fact, you've got about 75% of patients have uh, at least one event of AON in their lifetimes. So um, with this, we see a, a, an arm of the trial there in the study design where we'd have a low dose of only 10 million cells, upwards to 50 million. And the endpoints we'd be measuring maximum out to 24 weeks. So we see a lot of applicability. We've got a lot of data, and our focus, of course, is on the human therapeutic side. Um, that said, the cells look like they could be, even despite the fact that there uh, should be proved to be excellent monotherapies, we think that there are certainly ways um, to look at combination therapeutics there. But also, uh, we would see that in veterinary medicine that there's opportunities, um, research, maybe 3D bioprinting and biofabrication as well. So it's been a very busy past two quarters. Uh, things will probably not change going forward here over the next two to four quarters. So our focus is really on going from the pre-IND um, and getting into the clinic for CMB200. Uh, we're still a small company. So in terms of making the most out of the technology and having its broadest application, obviously, where we need partners and we'd be keen in particular. Um, uh, to seek partners on the MSC1 immuno-oncology side as well as in the ver veterinary category. Uh, but that said, along the way too, we want to make the cells available for researchers. And so we're going to launch MSC1 and MSC2 as a research use only products, uh, probably in 2016, mid-year. And then along the way, we're going to continue with our IP portfolio expansion, our fundraising efforts and building out our uh, SAB and our management team. So uh, that's the short story. Thanks so much for your time and attention.